Hello Internet, and welcome to another episode of That's All I Have to Say About That. As always, I'm your host, Stephen Mackey. Today we're talking about China's real real estate. Because when you leave control of the economy up to a few high-ranking individuals, crazy things ensue. We're specifically talking about ghost cities. And no, I'm not talking about American style ghost cities where people say, this town ain't big enough for the two of us. I'm talking about Chinese style ghost cities where two people living there might not bump into each other for days. All the shops in this mall are empty. Not that that worries the government because they're simply more concerned with maintaining economic growth. And one way of achieving that is building cities like this one. The big question though is how much longer all these shops and properties can remain vacant. Now that might seem like an exaggeration, but these cities are all over the place and some are quite strange. For example, did you want to visit Paris except without all of the people? Well, Paris now virtually a ghost town, streets empty. Geez, for a country with by far the highest population, you would think someone would want to live there. I've seen more people in the Forbidden City. This isn't a small problem either, with the Center for Research on Globalization pegging the number of empty apartments in these cities to be about 64 million, with about 50 of those ghost cities. Now this is one-fifth of the US population. So what happened? It's not as though a developer pitched to Xi Jinping, you know what this country needs? An abandoned fake Paris for the Call of Duty Advanced Warfare movie. Oh, we all know that one's coming out at some point. Ooh, or an abandoned fake London. Wow, five lane road? That's a little ambitious. Or if you're homesick from all these abandoned foreign countries, feel free to build a massive abandoned Chinese style city. Unsurprisingly, that's not exactly what the pitch meeting looked like. Let's look at these strange misplaced incentives that led to these cities being analyzed by analyzing first the half-finished abandoned creation of Fake Wall Street in Tianjin, China. Now this was no small project either with more than 32 billion US dollars invested into it. Now don't get me wrong, they really nailed the look, but they forgot to include the traffic. I haven't seen so few people on a Manhattan street since I watched The Fate of the Furious. Now these cities were made possible because of China's system of LGFVs, or local government financing vehicles, a system in which local governments get their financing from their projects. Now this has led to Forbes reporting, China's finance ministry released a statement asserting that outstanding local government debt amounted to 2.5 trillion dollars at the end of November 2017. That's right, China owes quite a bit of money. but. To whom? The big point to make on China in debt is that China has the largest reservoir of saving in the world. So it owes its debt to itself. Um, what? Yeah, don't think about that one too hard or you might throw up all over your keyboard. So how can China owe China money? Well, it's because of these LGFV projects. So let's go back to China's Manhattan project. Uh, probably should call it something else. Hey look, someone moved in! So where did this money come from? Well, the province of Tianjin used a local government financing vehicle to take out a loan from the People's Bank of China. So this brings us to an important point. What is a local government financing vehicle? I mean, I've been name dropping it like a grandmother who sat next to Kurt Russell 20 years ago and hasn't stopped talking about it since. Well, According to CNBC, China has strict regulations on how much debt a local government can take on. So local governments create these entities that they control to take out loans for them. Which sounds like it's above ground as it is. The worry is that with this growth slowing, the debt that these government vehicles have taken in might be defaulted upon. Which brings me back to a question I pondered in my youth. If a tree falls and no one is there to hear it, does it make a sound? Except, in this case, if you default on a loan but you also wrote the loan, does it matter? Well, it turns out the answer to both of these questions is obviously yes. While Fitch Rating says, The risks of default pose little threat because of the government's pervasive ownership and influence over the financial system. The real risk is that these defaults are going to lead to the government debt being more expensive for local governments to procure. 
Although, if the People's Bank of China is willing to loan more than $30 billion to make an uninhabited replica of Manhattan, don't worry, I'm sure your loan application isn't getting rejected. So this brings us to a bigger question. Why? Well, this is where national politics comes in. China has unveiled a national new type urbanization plan. The government of China really wants urbanization and their efforts have been somewhat effective, with sourceable reporting. In 1990, 26% of China's population were urban dwellers. Today, that is more than doubled to around 56%, with the goal of moving an additional 100 million people into cities by 2020 and an additional 150 million people by 2026. Now, I would say that moving human populations around is like herding cats. But cats won't sue you if you make them leave the house, so this migration's success and ambitions are pretty incredible. Now, because Shanghai and other existing cities have more than three times the population of New York, China has to diversify their locations. Only problem is, when you're trying to move a large percentage of your population, you can't just wait for construction crews to decide where to build something. Also, this strategy gives the government the ability to logically plan the city's design rather than having it grow up in random ways as people move in. Now, there is one other equally important reason these ghost cities are popping up in random places. Officials in China get promotions based on GDP growth. So if you want to drastically grow the gross domestic production in your province, take out a massive loan and build a city. Now this might sound bonkers to some, but let's go back to our fake Manhattan. Tianjin, the province that was building this massive town, was able to keep GDP growth in their province continuously growing, even as the rest of China's GDP fell, because the ongoing construction of this massive city. So there you have it, President Trump. If you really want to grow the economy and give coal miners their jobs, let's just build a massive set of skyscrapers all over Wheeling, West Virginia. This has led to the successful careers of many politicians in Tianjin, until... <laughs> their most recent mayor was arrested for a whole laundry list of items, in a conclusion about as unsuspected as James Bond killing the bad guy at the end of a movie. Now, unfortunately, yet unsurprisingly, this specific city isn't completed. Now that first line represents the rates of started projects, the second line finished projects, and the third line sold projects. Somehow sales have outpaced completion at every step. And oh man, how would you like to be one of those investors? People are worried about being lonely when they move into the big city. Try moving into this alternate I am legend metropolis. So, there's one more thing we need to address. Now the answer is fairly obvious, but why would nobody want to move into these places? I mean, someone clearly put a lot of effort into building some of this architecture. These came from a CNN gallery of architecture in Chinese ghost cities. So clearly someone cared. Even more impactful, life in rural China is not stellar. With minimal mechanization, enormous poverty rates, and the average farmer working with about 1.5 acres of land, most people aren't really itching to stay put. The problem? No one lives in those cities, so the only job that you can get if you live there is constructing the city. Now this push for urbanization has led to massive problems for slums and overcrowding of cities located commuting distance away from the major cities, while wow, those gorgeous ghost cities rot. So how is China dealing with all of this? Well, after the recent October meeting of the Chinese Communist Party, it was announced... This month, Beijing announced plans to increase the number of rental units on the market in rural areas. The capital is one of 13 major cities chosen for a pilot program to use rural land to build up rental housing units. From 2017 to 2021, the city plans to set aside 1,000 hectares of rural land. So what will happen to these ghost cities? Well, economists aren't sure, but there are a ton of Airbnbs in fake Manhattan, and oh man do I want to live in one. Also, you can live in fake Paris for just over 200 bucks a month in a two-bedroom, so maybe take a romantic trip to Tian Du Chung. Thank you, and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I hope you enjoyed that last video. 
For more episodes of That's All I Have to Say About That, please click here. Please click here to subscribe and remember to like below. And if you're really a fan, you can join our Facebook group. It's just a party over there.